All right, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody on social media. So glad you joined us again today. And hey, open your Bibles to the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm. You know, I've been teaching the past uh, two weeks on the sheepfold. And uh, I, I thought that uh, the 23rd Psalm would be a good way to cap, cap that off. And so uh, let's, let's talk about the 23rd Psalm today. You know, it was written by David, who started out as a shepherd and, and became king of Israel. And uh, I, what I want to do here is I want to read these six verses and then just kind of expound on them for the message today. Psalms 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's probably the greatest psalm of all the psalms. That's probably the greatest one. In my opinion, there's a lot of good psalms, but um, uh, certainly I think this is the most famous one. And so I just want to expound on these six verses here today for the message. First of all, uh, Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord, and he is the chief shepherd. And uh, Psalms 23 is for Christians only. It only pertains to Christians for all those who uh, have called on the name of the Lord Jesus and have been saved. And also Psalm 23, it, you know, it gets read a lot at funerals, but you need to realize Psalm 23 is not a psalm for the dead, it's a psalm for the living. It's a psalm for the living. And, uh, uh, you know, if you look at Psalm 22, that's past. Psalm 24 is future, but Psalm 23 is for us, us living Christians right here in the here and the now. It's not for when we get to heaven. Psalm 23 is for us in the here and the now. And notice the psalm starts out, the Lord is. The Lord is. Now I'm glad he is, aren't you? You know, I sure am glad that he's there. I really am. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 11:6, without faith it's impossible to please to please God. For whoever comes to God must believe that he is. And, and, and so that takes faith. And so uh, the Lord is, and you have to believe that he is. You have to approach him in faith, believing that he is. And of course, Jesus said in Revelation 1 verse 8, the Lord himself said concerning himself, he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come. You know, he's in past, present, and future. Did you know that? He really is. But, but, but he is the Lord. And uh, the Lord is, uh, and, and actually, what I want to do as I go through the 23rd Psalm, I want to point out to you, you know, in the 23rd Psalm, uh, you'll find all of the uh, covenant compound names of God in the 23rd Psalm. So as we go through here, I'm going to, I'm going to just give you uh, and let you know the, the compound names of the Lord as we see them in the 23rd Psalm. And uh, this, this uh, the Lord, actually the word there in the Hebrew is Jehovah, which means the Lord. And then I'll point out the compound names as we go. But the Lord is my, my, now you need to realize, the you know, Lord is my, uh, that's personal. That's personal. You need to realize Jesus belongs to each and every Christian individually. He's my shepherd. He's your shepherd. If you're born again, if you know the Lord is your savior, he's your shepherd. It's an individual thing. 
you see. The Lord is my shepherd. And uh, the shepherd, of course, and I pointed this out over the last two Sundays, is one who takes care of the sheep, who watches over and protects. You see, the Lord takes care of us. He's our great shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. And uh, he, he watches over his sheep and he takes care of each one individually. Did you know that he knows each and every one of us individually? Uh, you know, uh, he, he calls us by name. Did you know the Lord knows your name? He really does. And, and, and I mean, he knows us down to, to the very last intimate detail. You know, he, he said all the hairs of our head are numbered, you know. And I make his job easy on him, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't have much hair, you know. But, uh, but uh, he knows every one of them that's up there and the same with you. All of our hairs are numbered. You see, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a personal shepherd. And uh, he takes care of us. He watches over us. He protects us. He's our shepherd. You know, in John, the 10th chapter, we read it a couple of Sundays ago, but it bears repetition. Jesus said of himself, he said, I am the good shepherd. And he said, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. You know, he gave his life for us on Calvary's cross, didn't he? And then he went on to say, a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep, flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and does, does not care about the sheep. You know, Jesus is not a hireling, is he? He's the shepherd. He cares about us. He says, I am. Now notice in verse 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. He is. See, the Lord is my shepherd. He is the good shepherd. And then he says it. He says, I know my sheep. Don't ever forget that. The Lord knows you. He knows who you are. He knows where you live. And he cares about you. And, and then here we get in, in this word shepherd, we get one of the Lord's uh, uh, compound uh, covenant names. And it's Jehovah Ra. Jehovah Ra, which means the Lord, my shepherd. The Lord, see, Jehovah means the Lord, and Ra has to do with being a shepherd. And it's interesting, like I said, all of, all of his, or not all of them, but almost all of them, several, many of the Lord's compound covenant names are seen in the 23rd Psalm. And here you have, you have the, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, again, Jehovah Ra. Jehovah means Lord, and Ra R-A-A-H means shepherd. So he's our shepherd. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You know, if Jesus is your shepherd, if he really is your shepherd, there should come a time in your life where there is no want or lack in any area of your life. Spirit, soul, body, financially. If he's really your shepherd, you should get to a place and be at a place where there's no want in your life. That's the will of God, that you have no want in your life, that all your needs are met. Doesn't the Bible say that he'll supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus? So that's the will of the Lord for all of us, is that we do not want, that we have no want for anything. You know, um, there's a little five-year-old girl that uh, was to quote the 23rd Psalm, before her church on a Sunday morning. And she got up and said, as she quoted, she's supposed to quote all six verses, you know, five years old, 23rd Psalm, much like the little girl we had uh, on the video uh, two weeks ago, or, not, or I guess it was last week, you know, remember her? Well, well, it wasn't her, but it was another little five-year-old girl. Because that one we had on the video last week, I think she went through all six verses. But this other little girl, she got up, she's going to quote the, five years old now, she's going to quote the 23rd Psalm, and, and, and she gets before the congregation, and she says, the Lord is my shepherd, he's all I want. And then she sits down. Well, she may not have got all six verses, but she, she encapsulated and got the essence of that, of that psalm. And you know, when we have the attitude of that little girl, if we have that attitude, the Lord is my shepherd, he's all I want, then I believe we'll be at a place where there'll be no want in our lives. And if you think about it, if you have him, what more do you want? What more do you want? 
And then, and then if you're taking notes, the compound name, the covenant compound name of the Lord here is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. And actually what this really means is Jehovah Jireh. It certainly means the Lord our provider, but it, it means this, the one who sees ahead and makes the provision. The one who sees ahead and makes the provision. I remember when my wife and I, the Lord directed us to get married back in 1989 and, and quit our jobs and go to Tulsa to go to Bible school. Now, I don't recommend you do that unless the Lord tells you to do to do it. But he directed us to do that. And uh, she was working as a nurse, making making uh, good money. And I was working as a school teacher and, and, and was doing OK. And uh, but, you know, you're going to quit your jobs you know, resign and, uh, and, and go, go, you know, to another place where you don't know anybody, you don't have any family or anything like that. You're just gonna, gonna go down there and, you know, uh, you better have heard from the Lord, but we believe that we did. And so we had made a list and we'd written, I don't know, 10 or 12 things on the list that uh, before we ever went down there that we needed the Lord to, uh, uh, to <laughs> we needed, you know, to have, is that right? And there's about 10 or 12 things on the list and we needed all, I mean, we didn't need two or three or four or five. We needed all, all dozen of them. I mean, we needed all or we were going to, or we were going to have some trouble, you know, financially and, and, and in some other ways. But, uh, but I remember uh, before we, before we actually moved down there, we, 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 we believed God, trusted the Lord. And we, she had that list because my wife's a list maker. Thank God for her list. You know, you know, if you have a list, you won't forget stuff, particularly when you go shopping, you know, and other other places. So she's got a list for everything. It's been a great blessing to me. And so uh, but she made that list. And so we got down there and I tell you what, uh, we, we get down there and, and, and she starts checking off that list. And I mean, every I don't mean one thing, three things, five things. I mean, all 10, 12, 13, 14, whatever it was. Every last one of them, she just checked off. Boom, boom, boom. And I made the statement. And I didn't know about Jehovah Jireh. I didn't know of uh, uh, that compound name. Uh, I didn't know what it meant. But I told her, I said, you know, I said, Diane, it looks like somebody came down here in front ahead of us and just got everything set up for us. And all we had to do is move down here and just <laughs> just enjoy the benefits of it. Well, somebody did go down there ahead of us. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord, he went down, he saw ahead, he made the provision and see, we were in his plan. We were doing what he told us to do. And we showed up down there and he had everything right in place for us. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Jehovah Jireh. And we had no once, I mean, no once during that, during that uh, two years of Bible school, every need was met, you know. Now we didn't have a bazillion dollars or nothing like that. I mean, but every need was met, you know, that beats starving, doesn't it? I mean, I saw God move so supernaturally getting my job at Tulsa Junior College. I shouldn't have had that job. I mean, really, I shouldn't have had it. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I mean, you know how unheard of it is, is to go to go down someplace, walk in essentially off the street, walk into a junior college and say, hey, can I teach math here part time? I mean, they hired me on the spot. I mean, think about that. I mean. I mean, and they gave me a job in the math lab and, you know, directing the math lab and all. That. I mean, just it, well, it was it was Jehovah Jireh. You see, he, he saw head, head. He made the provision and we got down there. He's our shepherd. He looked after us and we had no wants. Isn't that wonderful? And he's no respecter of persons. What he did for us, he'll do for you, you see. And he's done that here with us in this church over the last almost 27 years. He's seen ahead, made the provision, you know. Isn't that wonderful? Glory to God. And then so I, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Now, it's interesting. He makes me to lie down. That, that phrase, make me lie down. In English, it's a phrase, make me lie down. Four words. But it's translated from one Hebrew word, meaning it means this. The one Hebrew word. All right. One Hebrew word, I'm not even going to try to say it, <laughs> say it okay? But, but make me lie down. It's one Hebrew word, and what it really means is this, to recline, to lay down and rest. To recline or to lay down and rest. And so that's what he does. He, he, he causes us to recline, 
to lay down and rest. Notice where? In green pastures. In green pastures. What I take out of this is this. You know, even though the English says he makes us to lay down, the Hebrew, there's not a connotation of him making us do anything. It's a connotation more of him leading us and, and causing us to lay down in green pastures and rest. You know, the Lord is a leader, not, not a maker. You know, he wants to lead you into things. He doesn't want to twist your arm and make you do anything. You understand that. He's given all of us a free will and, and, and he's not into, into being a task master and, and, and beating people over the head to make them do stuff. But, you know, he'll, he'll cause us and lead us into, into those green pastures and, and lead us in there to rest and, and take pasture and, and so on and so forth. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, he's such a wonderful, wonderful shepherd. He'll... Uh, He'll cause us to lay down and rest, you know. Now, now, I'll say this. The Lord wants us to be hard workers, okay? He wants us to work hard, all right. Don't misunderstand me. The Bible says if a person won't work, they don't eat. You know, if a man won't work, he won't eat. You understand? He, want, he likes industry. He likes us to be industrious. He said be about, he said be, uh, be about his business, you know, till he comes. Remember that? So he wants us to be industrious, all right. But, you know, you can work too hard. Did you, did you know you can. There, I mean, and just burn yourself out burn the candle at both ends and, and that's one reason he's there if he sees we're burning the candle at both ends what you know what I mean by that he'll, he'll cause us to say, say hey go lay down get some rest you know and uh, I, I just I just enjoy that about the Lord he'll he, he won't he'll, he won't make us do anything but he'll lead us and prompt us to to, to get rest and get, uh, get you know get, get, to refresh ourselves and, and then it says he leads me beside the still water beside the still waters. I like still waters, don't you? I, I, I mean, I do. And, and actually, you study into this word lead here in the Hebrew. It means to move at a convenient speed. To move at a convenient speed and manner befitting travelers and their situations. You know what I take away from this is God's not going to move you along. The Lord Jesus isn't going to move you along faster than you're able to go. Is that wonderful? You know, um, <laughs> and, and, and that's good. Um, I mean, have you ever, ever seen these, uh, 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 you know, I, I don't know, these people out jogging and they'll have their trainer next to them and the trainer's like riding a bicycle, you know, and, and he'll be blowing the whistle and say, hurry up, go, 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 you know. And, uh, but the Lord's not like that. He, he's not going to push us faster than we're, or push isn't the right word, but he's not going to, you know, he's, he's not going to uh, uh, lead us and, 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 and cause us to move faster than we're able to go. Isn't that wonderful? That's wonderful. And so, so he'll, he'll help us to, to move at a convenient speed and in a manner befitting travelers in their situations. He knows your situation and, uh, and, and he won't cause you to move faster than you're able to go. Now that doesn't mean you can sit down on your blessed assurance and not move at all. Is that right? I mean, he, he wants us to, to move and, 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 and accomplish things, but, but, but he won't cause you to go faster than you're able to go. And, and that's a blessing. And this word lead here has a connotation to it of guiding people, leading them in an orderly fashion with great care. He'll lead you in an orderly fashion and great care. So remember that about your great shepherd, the Lord Jesus. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. If you're taking notes, it's his compound name here is Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, my peace. The Lord, my peace. And isn't that peaceful being in green pastures? Isn't that peaceful being beside the still waters? See, that's what our great shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, wants for all of his sheep. He wants us to be uh, lying down in green pastures and he, he wants us to be beside the still waters. He wants that for us. He really does. And you know what that'll do? It'll restore our soul. Because the next part of this psalm says, he restores my soul. You know, uh, sheep are prone to wander. And remember, he likens Christians to sheep. He likens you and me to sheep. Now remember, we don't want to be goats. Is that right? We talked about that the last two weeks. We want to be sheep. But you know, sheep are prone to wander. Sheep are prone to wander. And when we wander away from Jesus... He will leave the 99 sheep 
who have not strayed and he'll come after us. We need to realize that about him because sheep, all of us, are prone to wander and get off the path that he has for us. We're all prone to do it. You need to understand that about yourself. And, uh, but when we do wander away and get out of the will of God, you know, to whatever degree, he will leave the 99 sheep who have not strayed or wandered and he'll come after you. He'll come after you. He'll come after me. He'll come after all of us if we've strayed away and he'll find us and he'll lay us around his neck. Have you ever seen a shepherd with a sheep, you know, around his neck, you know? You know what I'm talking about? With, with, the, with the hooves, the front hooves over here and the back hooves over here and the sheep's around the... I wish I had a picture to show you, but you know what I'm talking about. And that's what the Lord will do if, if we get off track. He'll come after us. He'll lay us around his neck and he'll bring us back to the sheepfold and completely restore us. Isn't that wonderful? He really, really, really will. You know, our soul can become distressed as a result of wandering in disobedience. Have you ever gotten off the track God had for you, got over in some disobedience? And then, I tell you what, that'll affect your soul. It'll affect your soul. But Jesus comes after us. He brings us back to the sheepfold and he restores our soul. I like what the Lord said in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. He said in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, he said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Is that wonderful? Is that wonderful? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. See, so if you need to have your soul restored, learn from me, get into the word of God and study the word of God, read the word of God, see? And uh, that's how you can learn from him. Sit under good preaching and good teaching of the word of God. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, the Lord said. He, and you need to understand this about him. He's gentle and lowly in heart. But you know, there's many facets to the Lord Jesus. I mean, do you remember he took a whip and cleared the temple out, didn't he? There's many, fa just like you and me, did you know there's different facets to us? Right? And we're created in his likeness and his image. There's different facets to him. I mean, he did take the whip and clean the temple out, didn't he? But also, he's got a side to him where he's gentle and lowly in heart. And, 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 and you know, even when he cleared the temple out of those money changers, he did that in humility, in gentleness and lowly, lowliness of heart because he cared about his father's house and he didn't want his father's house desecrated. You, you understand that? He's humble. The Lord is very, very humble. He's gentle. And, and he said that of himself. He said he, said he was humble. If he says he's humble. He's humble. And uh, from gentle and lowly in heart. But here's the thing. You'll find rest for your souls. That's what the Lord wants for you. He wants rest for your souls. And here's the compound name. Again, if you're taking notes, it's Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. R-A-P-H-A, -A, Jehovah Rapha, which means the Lord my healer. Aren't you glad he's the healer? He's the healer. I tell you what, he really, really is. So he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. See, again, he's a leader. He's not a maker, but he's a leader. And remember, and if you've been watching my series on Wednesday nights on how to hear from God, I've been teaching you how the Holy Spirit leads. And, uh, you know, I've taught you that before, but repetition is the seed of learning, you know. And so it's good to hear it again and again and again. But he leads through his holy written word, doesn't he? He leads through his word. The Bible says that uh, in Psalm 119, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So that's how our great shepherd leads us. He leads us through his holy written word. You say, well, Pastor Terry, what happens when you need to be led in a situation, you know, and, and you don't have it written in the, in, in, in the word of God, like which house to buy or which job to, to take or that sort of thing. Then remember what the Bible says. He'll lead us with his peace. He'll lead us with his peace. And right on the inside, if you're born again, if you're a sheep of the Lord's pasture, the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you and he'll lead you with that peace or lack thereof. Remember, it's like an umpire. 
the Bible says. In the Old Testament, it says you'll be let out with peace. And in the New Testament, the Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And that word rule is, is the word we could use umpire. What does an umpire do? It call, umpire calls things uh, what? Out or safe. And so if you come up on a situation and you can't go into the word of God and find it verbatim, like which job should I take or which house should I buy or which car should I buy or that sort of thing, you know, which way should we go or, you know, you under, understand that. Then, uh, you know, do I take Elm or do I take Sycamore? You know, which, 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 do, uh, which, which road do we take? Well, you go by that peace or lack thereof on the inside. That's how he leads us. See, how does he lead us in paths of righteousness? Well, through that, through his holy written word, are through peace versus no peace, right on the inside. You need to learn to follow that. You need to learn to follow that. It can save your life. And, uh, but, but I tell you what, if the Lord's leading you, listen to this, He'll always lead you in paths of righteousness. Always. He always will. If, now listen to me. If you are on a sinful path, the Lord did not lead you there. If you are on a sinful path, the Lord did not lead you there. You can rest assured of that. And, and it's, it's something else that there's something else here that I want to mention to you. And you need to think about as to how you can know whether or not you're on the path the Lord has for you. Now, now, now think about this. If it's a sinful path, you know he didn't lead you there. That, that's easy. But, here, but here's something else that I think you ought to think about. You can find it in Proverbs 4.18. Proverbs 4.18. The, the Bible says the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It shines brighter and brighter. So if you're on the path that the Lord has led you to, then things ought to be getting brighter and brighter, not darker and darker, not dimmer and dimmer. And I tell you, it was worth coming to church just to hear me say that right there. If, how can I know, Pastor, if I'm on the path God wants me on? Well, if you're on a path that God wants you on, if you're on a path that the Lord Jesus had led you, led you, led you on, then you can know this, things ought to be getting brighter and brighter, not dimmer and dimmer, darker and darker. Can you say amen to that? Amen. It's absolutely true. And so remember, it, uh, he, the Bible says here in Psalm 23, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so uh, if he's leading us and we're on one of the paths he wants us on, uh, uh, things ought to be getting brighter and brighter, clearer and clearer, you know. Not, oh, I want, I don't, I've been walking down this road for a long time and boy, it's getting darker. I don't know. Well, I tell you what, the Lord didn't lead you down that road. You just went down that one yourself. Have you ever gone down some roads yourself, you know, in life? I'm talking roads of life and <laughs> things get more muddled and more confused. And, 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 you know, has anybody ever done that besides me? Well, I can tell you that you just missed it. We just missed it. We just missed it. So we need to we need we need to repent and ask the Lord, Lord, which which road do you want me to go down? And he'll lead. How will he lead you? Either through the holy written word or what? The peace versus no peace. You know, see, if we gotten on one of those roads we shouldn't be on. Well, we wandered off. Well, he's not going to beat you over the head. He'll come after you. He'll take you like a little sheep, you know, because we're sheep, aren't we? Of his pasture, he'll put you around his neck and he'll get you back on the right road. OK, that's who we're serving here. The Lord Jesus, the good shepherd. All right. So so if you're on the right path that God wants you on, things ought to be getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And it says here for his name's sake. What does that mean? Well, as we walk on righteous paths, it will bring honor to his name. That's what that means. As we walk on righteous paths, it will bring honor to his name. As we walk in a dark community, as we walk in a dark world, and we walk in righteousness in the midst of a dark and perverse generation, what will it do? It, the, the sinners will see us walking in the, in the righteous paths, and it will bring honor to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you see. And hopefully it would draw them to want to get saved themselves and, and become a sheep of his pasture themselves. Now the compound name here for this right here is Jehovah Sid Canoe. Now I'm not going to spell that for you. It'd take too long. So you can look it up, Google it or whatever, you know. And, uh, uh, but it's the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Sid Canoe. And, and, and I guess I'm pronouncing that right, but you can, you can look it up. But it's the Lord our righteousness. So he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Boy, this is a good one right here. Now, they're all good, but this is really good right here. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You know, there will be some valleys we walk through in this life. There'll be some valleys that we walk through in this life. You, you need to realize this, and, and you probably have, if you've lived any length of time, uh, as we walk through this world, there, we, do, we don't all, I mean, we, not everything is a mountaintop experience. You understand what I mean by that? Not everything is a mountaintop experience. I mean, not, I mean, not everything is going to be still waters. Not everything is going to be green pastures. It's just the fact of the matter. It's just the truth of the matter. You, 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 you understand that, don't you? I mean, wouldn't it be wonderful if everything was a mountaintop experience? Wouldn't it be wonderful if everything was still waters and green pasture? Wouldn't that be wonderful? But that's just not life. We live in a fallen world. And, and sometimes there's some valleys of the shadow of death. Sometimes there are. Sometimes there are. And I think that's why this psalm gets read at funerals, because of this right here. But you know, the dead, the one that's dead in the casket, they're dead. I mean, they're dead. Is that right? But this is for the living here. As I said at the beginning, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, I, I think about people that get diagnosed with, with, with cancer. And, and it's, you know, the doctor says it's likely that, that this is going to be terminal and those sorts of things and other things that come up medically and so on and so forth and other things that can happen in life beyond medical situations. But I tell you what, you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's a, that's a scary place. It really, 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 really is. And, uh, but, but there's good news. Notice what, what the psalmist said here. Notice what David said. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for the Lord's with me. That's good news. You see, for a Christian, notice it's a, it's a shadow of death only. And I've never seen a shadow hurt anybody, have you? Think about that. And then I, I like what one minister said. He said, if you find yourself going through the valley of the shadow of death, I like what, what this one minister says. He said, he said, don't stop. He said, if you're going, he said, don't stop. Just keep right on walking. Just get on through to the other side as fast as you can. I can say amen to that, right? If there's one place you don't want to stall out and stop, it's in the middle of the valley of the shadow of death. Just keep right on going. Because cause the Lord's right there with you. He's leading you. He's guiding you. Just keep on going. Just keep on following. Don't, don't stop following him in the middle of that valley. You know, you, you, know, you want to just keep following him. He'll lead, you, he'll lead you right out the other side. Can you say amen to that? Absolutely. He will. He will. And, and uh, you know, he said, the Lord said in Hebrews 13, 5, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's something good to know. The Lord will never leave. Well, the Hebrews brings this out that the Lord will never leave, leave us nor forsake us. And, and the Lord Jesus, he, he said that in, during, during his ministry, he'd be with us and and so on. Much we could say about it. But but Hebrews 13, 5 brings it out as clear as it, 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 it said in the Bible, I think. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You need to remember that about our great shepherd, Jesus. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And even when there's times where you, you, you think he's nowhere to be found. Have you ever been in a place like that in your life where you wondered where God was? Where are you at, Lord? You know, I'm in the middle of this situation and, uh, and, and uh, it looks like he's nowhere to be found. But don't ever forget this. The Bible says, <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bible says he'll never leave us. It's just the anointing. <clears throat> he'll never leave us. It's the anointing. It'll lift here in just a second. I just never know when that's going to come. <clears throat> Uh, 
would just say he's nowhere to be found. He'd never leave you. Never forsake you. He's right there with you. And things didn't work out the way you thought that they would. But I tell you what, when things don't work out the way you think that they should have, you may not, you may not realize this, but God has always got your good at heart. And you may not know till eternity, till you're in heaven, why a situation went the way that it did. But when you see it from his perspective, you'll know why the situation turned out the way that it did. And you get down on your knees and, you, and you'll thank him that it went the way that it did, even though you didn't understand it at the time. Did you, did you get what the Holy Ghost is saying there? Yes. So a lot of people get angry with the Lord. and They think that he's left them, but he hasn't left. He's right there with you. And, uh, but uh, when something doesn't go the way you think it should, when you really are, because see, we, walk, we, we see through a glass dimly, the Bible says, but there's a day coming where we'll be able to see things clearly. And when, we, when we're able to see him clearly, we'll see that he didn't leave us or forsake us, but he, had, he really worked for our good in the midst of that valley of the shadow of death. Yes. Ah. Ah. Isn't the Lord good? Yes. Ah. Well, I start crying sometimes. People think there's something wrong with me, but there's not. It's the, it's the, it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Ah. He's, uh, you know, he's omniscient. He's everywhere at the same time. Did you know that? The Lord's, you know, you know the devil, he's not everywhere at the same time, is he? But, but the Lord is. <coughs> he's, he, says, uh, he says, I'll fear no evil, the psalmist said, for you are with me. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 139, he says, if I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. There's nowhere you can go to escape the presence of God. Amen. You know, sometimes people ask me about Psalm 139. That, you know, they understand that if I ascend into heaven, he's there. We all understand that. But they'll ask me about, about if I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Did you know Jesus has the keys of hell and of death? Did you know that? And he, he, can go, he, can, he can go into hell if he wants to. I remember that lady, Mary K. Baxter. You remember her? And, and if you don't, she, she was a, the Lord gave her a vision of hell many years ago. She's won multitudes of people to the Lord Jesus Christ as a result of it. I, I believe her to be authentic and the experience she had to be authentic. And, uh, and he took her into hell and showed her hell and t told her to warn people about that place. And, uh, and uh, he gave her a tour of the place and she, she shares what horrible place it is, but how people would cry out to the Lord in flames and fire and torment and say, say, save me, save me, save me, Lord, save me. And he, with tears in his eyes, would tell him, I reached out to you in life many, many times and would recount to them how many times he reached out to them but yet they refused to receive him time and time and time again and if you refuse to receive the Lord Jesus our great shepherd if you refuse to receive him there's no place else to go but hell and people go there and it breaks the Lord Jesus's heart because he died on Calvary's cross so that you don't have to go but even if you make your bed in hell He's there. You can't feel his presence there. You know, I don't know what it's like to not feel the presence of God. Let me just teach you on this just a little bit. <clears throat> I see why the anointing came on me right there. 
Do you know, His presence is here in the earth. His presence is in heaven. Nobody would argue with that. His presence is in heaven. His presence is here on the earth. Few would argue with that. Uh, did, did, did you know that you can sense his presence more greatly at some times than others? Did you know that? Now, when we came into the when I came into the church this morning, I mean, certainly, you know, his presence is here. Certainly in the Bible, Jesus said two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst. But I wasn't sensing his presence. Uh, let me put it another way. I sense his presence. But you remember when when I started weeping there? Remember when I started weeping there? What did he do? He increased his presence on me. Did you hear what I just said there? He increased the, the manifestation of his presence on me. And now, now, now that's lifted. Now, is he still here? Yeah, but he's just not manifesting himself as he was a few minutes ago on me. You understand that? I think we all need to think about this. Let's don't ever take his presence for granted. One of the worst things, I, in fact, the worst thing about hell, something even worse than the fire and the darkness, it's you can't sense his presence. I don't ever want to be where I can't sense his presence. How about you? Thank God for his presence. Even if you make your bed in hell, let's not talk about literal hell. I mean, it's there. I don't want to go there. You can miss it by receiving Jesus. But I tell you what, you can make your bed in hell, so to speak, here on the earth. You know what I mean by that? Have you ever, have you ever, somebody said, you know, you made your bed, now you got to lay in it, right? Have you ever made a bed you didn't want to lay in, you know? Has anybody ever done that here on the earth besides me? But I got good news for you. Even if you make your uh, a hellacious bed for yourself, the Lord will be right there with you in the middle of that hellaciousness. Glory to God. And he'll get you out of it if you'll cooperate with him. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For you are with me. No matter how bad we mess things up. He's there with us to help us. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is ever present. He is there. That's the compound name. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Well, I like this one. A rod is to drive off the wolves. The staff is for correction. Keeping the sheep on the right track. You know, a shepherd has what's called a shepherd's hook. I guess you call it a hook, don't you? My grandma had one of those. <laughs> she had a cane because she walked with a cane. And she had that cane and whenever I'd get out of line, she'd take that cane and she'd grab me around the neck. And she'd pull that, she'd pull me right over there, you know, right, right up to her face and she'd tell me to straighten up, you know. Well, Jesus had, now Jesus doesn't have a cane, but he's got one of those shepherd hooks, you know. And when we mess up, that's what, a, that's what, the, that's what the shepherds, uh, that's what that, that's what that uh, staff is there for. The, when the sheep getting out of line, the shepherd will take it and, and correct the sheep to get them back on line. Don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise it. Remember the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, my son, my daughter, despise not the chastening of the Lord. There's a lot of Christians despise that. You know, one way that the Lord chastens his sheep is, now he's, the Lord is the great shepherd, but he'll use his under shepherds a lot of times to, to teach the word of God, to bring correction to the sheep. And a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, sheep don't like that. Well, the sheep are okay with it, but the goats don't like it. Now, if you don't know what I mean when I say goats, listen to my last two sermons, but I tell you, they don't like that too much. I don't know about you, but I like it when the Lord corrects me. 
Now, I don't like the correction, but I like it when he corrects me because it's showing me that he loves me and that he cares for me. And he wants me to get back on track. You see, sheep are most comforted when they know the shepherd is looking out for them and is willing to be bold enough to protect them and correct them in love. And the name here would be Jehovah Ezer, E-Z-E-R, Jehovah Ezer, which means the Lord my help. You know, I, and, and you know that the, 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 the great shepherd Jesus is there to help us. And did you know he has his under shepherds which I would be one of. There's multitudes of them in the world. And did you know he has us stationed and positioned to help people? Did you know that? And you know an observation I've made over the years, I just want to read this. Over three decades of experience, many in congregations, now these would be the goats, see their pastor, a good kind pastor who's there to help them, to protect them, to comfort them, they view him as an adversary. As an enemy, an opponent, or a bad guy. I've seen this in hundreds of churches. And I've never been able to figure that out or understand it. And the best I can come up with is I think that it has something to do with the flesh. Not wanting to submit to anyone which even remotely resembles authority, even godly authority. I've watched that like an adversarial role between pastors and their congregations. I think it's just that some people don't want to be submitted to anything. And people don't realize that pastors are there to help folk. Do you know when Jesus was here on the earth in his ministry? The religious people came after him, didn't they? Didn't they? And after Jesus died, rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, then guess who they went after? Peter, James, and John. It's amazing that people just don't like any kind of authority. I've watched this over the many years. But no matter what the sheep or goats do, Jesus is there to help them. Just like my wife and I, we've been here for almost 27 years now. As one of Jesus' under shepherds, and we've been here to help sheep and goat alike. Glory to God. But I just have never understood why there's an adversarial role. I've watched it in our ministry over the years. People, we've been over backwards to help them. And they'll come against you and do all sorts of evil towards you. I've never understood that. Never have understood it. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This is a good one right here. When the enemy's on the attack, they're coming after you. Just know that the Lord has prepared a table in the presence of your enemies. And all you need to do is pull up to that table and eat. Can you say amen? amen. That's victory is what that is. That's victory is what that is. When your enemies are pursuing, coming after you, just know this. The Lord's prepared a table in the presence of your enemies. Just pull up to that table and eat. And that's a victory at its highest level. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my victory. You anoint my head with oil. You know, shepherds anointing sheep's heads with oil was a continual process that produced soothing on a regular basis to keep the sheep soft and tender. And that's what the Lord does to us. As you study the Bible, you see the Lord using the oil of gladness. You see him using fresh oil. Doesn't the Bible say his mercies are new every morning? You see, and, and know this about our good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. He anoints us regularly on a daily basis 
with the oil of gladness and with fresh oil. And he does that to keep our hearts soft and tender. I don't know about you, but I know in my life I, I found this world can make your heart calloused and hardened. Let the Lord anoint your head with oil. You'll stay glad and fresh. You'll stay glad and fresh. Glory to God. And another reason shepherds anoint sheep's heads with oil is to, is to prevent parasites. I don't know about you, but I don't like parasites. And that's one reason that a shepherd would anoint sheep's heads with oil is to prevent parasites. The oil runs into the crevices around the sheep's ears, eyes, and nose to repel flies, fleas, ticks, and other parasites. You know what parasites are? They're blood suckers. And in the spiritual realm, what they'll do is they'll suck all the joy right out of you. Did you hear what I just said? That's what goats and wolves will do. They'll just suck all the joy out of a sheepfold, out of a pastor, out of a congregation. Par spiritual para parasites, if you will. But that's why we have the great shepherd there and he anoints our head with oil and the oil runs down and what it does is it prevents parasites from, from making us sick and even causing terminal illness, you see. Glory to God. And you know, Isaiah 10, 27 says this, that burdens from your shoulders and yokes from around your neck will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Glory to God. And so that's what shepherds would do. They would anoint their sheep with, 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 with oil to keep the parasites from, from taking hold. But you know what? If parasites would take a hold, you know, that anointing oil would go in there, glory to God, and, and cause those yokes to be destroyed and those burdens to be removed. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Absolutely. He anoints our head with oil. Why? So burdens from our shoulders and yokes from around our neck will be destroyed and removed. About a decade ago, my wife and I and I seldom would say anything like this or share this with you, but I feel it's time now I can share this. About a decade ago, my wife and I were wounded by an attack of some wolves and many goats butting us. Spiritual parasites, if you will. But the Lord loves them too. And by the way, when, when wolves attack and when, when goats butt thing you got to do is you walk in love. Can you say amen to that? You respond in love. You turn the other cheek. You respond in love. Now, sometimes a shepherd has to drive a wolf off. You, you do and you have to. There's some things you have to do. But, but, but you always do it in love. Because love never what? Love never fails. But about a decade ago, my wife and I were wounded. And, and I don't talk about this because we don't, we, don't, we don't publicize these things. But I'll share this with you. We were attacked by some wolves and many goats. I'm not talking about real wolves. I'm talking about people. Now, it wasn't, mortal. It wasn't a mortal wound or a fatal wound, you know, but flesh wounds. You know what a flesh wound is. All you have to do is watch the Lone Ranger. Now, the Lone Ranger never shot anybody. He always shot the gun out of their hands, you know. But that only happens on the Lone Ranger, you know. But there'd be flesh wounds on the Lone Ranger. You know, when he'd shoot somebody, it'd be a flesh wound. You know, hit him in the leg or in the arm or not a, not a vital organ where anybody would die. So it wasn't, it wasn't a mortal wound, but, but it was a flesh wound. But how many of you know flesh wounds hurt pretty bad too? I, I don't want to get shot anywhere, not even in the leg or in the arm. How about you? I remember I asked the golf pro years ago, I asked him one time, I don't know how he got on the subject. I said, would you rather get shot by a nine millimeter or 22? He said, I wouldn't want to get shot by a pop cork gun. <laughs> but, you know, even though you don't get hit in a vital place, how many of you know that uh, uh, how many of you know that 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 even, you know, getting a flesh wound hurts, doesn't it? And my wife and I were at one of the lowest points we'd, we'd been. Nobody knew it. And out of the blue, I received a call from Joyce Myers Ministry. One of her, you, you've heard of her. One of her, and, and I do not know her personally. And one of her chief assistants, head assistants, Mike Shepard, 
You ever heard of him? Yes. One of the greatest men of God you'll ever meet. A true pastor. Yes, a true pastor. Yes. And he called me on the phone. He said, uh, he said uh, would it be okay if uh, I came by? Joyce wants me to share something with you. And I said, absolutely, absolutely. She, he came by, he came by. She sent him over, he came by. And, uh, and, and he handed, handed me, me, me a check and a wonderful offering that that ministry, the Meyer ministry made here, wonderful. But what he said next was far better than any money they could ever gave me because he started to pour in the oil. And he said this, he said, he said, uh, Joyce wanted me to come over. The Lord laid it upon her heart to tell you and your wife that you've been faithful standing your post. Amen. That's worth more than any money anybody could ever give me. And I thought about those wolves and those goats butting me, you know, people who had never done anything for God, never even built a chicken coop for the Lord. And here you got a woman that's reaching two thirds of the globe with the gospel. Now, who am I going to listen to? I think I'm going to listen to her. What a blessing that was. It was time right here I needed to tell that. Not to build my wife and I up, but just to let you know the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. And he'll use people and he'll, he'll do things that he needs to do when we're low and when we're down. You see how supernatural that was? Think about that. Nobody knew, but God knew. And he sent somebody, I mean, just think of someone on her level, on a Joyce Meyer scale of how high up, you know what I'm talking about, she is, what a wonderful person she is, to come and bless us. Think about that. And think about, the, think about that. A shepherd came over and, and poured some oil in. Think about that, Mike Shepherd. That's, that's cool too, his last name, Shepherd. And it really helped us. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, praise God. The wolves can howl and the goats can butt. But Jesus will anoint our heads with oil. We'll stay soft, sweet, glad, refreshed. I tell you what, my wife and I, we're just, we pulled up to that table that the Lord's prepared for us. And we're going to continue to do the work he's called us to do. Can you say amen? amen. Absolutely. And that's, and, that, and that's Jehovah Makedesh Kem. If you're taking notes, I'm not going to spell it, but it's Jehovah Makedesh Kem, which means uh, holiness, sanctification, so on and so forth. See the anointing with oil. Remember David, he wrote this song, but remember he was anointed with oil, wasn't he? Does anybody know who anointed him? It was Samuel. So David knew what it was like to have oil poured on his head, anointed as king. Happened when he was a young boy. But see, he was set apart. So Jehovah Makedeshkem means to be set apart. Now let me close this up. My cup runs over. Do you know the Lord wants to not only fill your cup up, but run it over? The Bible says, he op for the tither, he opens the windows of heaven and pours out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive. The Bible says, if we'll give unto his work, He'll give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Remember that little boy gave his lunch and there was what? Twelve basketfuls left over. Remember, Jesus told his apostles to go out and let down the nets. But they went down, went out, let out, let down one net. Remember, there's so many fish, it was broken. They should have listened to him and put down the nets. But they just put down one net, Peter did. Remember that? See, he doesn't just want to fill your net, singular. He wants you to put down nets, plural, and he wants to fill those up and run them over. You see, he's a good God. He runs our cup not only full, but runs it over. Why does he run it over? Why does he run it over? I'll tell you why. He runs it over. See, he fills it up to bless you, but he runs it over so you can bless others. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I like that one. But, you know, I, I, I got a revelation here on this word follow. This word follow doesn't mean just like, you know, a, like a dog would follow you around as you took it on a walk. This word, it's, it's, a strong, it's a strong action word. It means to pursue. It means to hunt down. It means to chase down. It's akin to like Pharaoh was hunting down Israel, you know, to the Red Sea. 
It, it, it's such a firm word, it means to harass. So what this means is, is that God's goodness and mercy will hunt us down, will seek us out, will pursue us, and even harass us in a good way with goodness and mercy. Can you say amen to that? Amen. That's a good deal. He'll hunt you down with that mercy and that goodness, and it'll follow you all the days of your lives. And certainly that goodness and mercy is there to bless us. But think about this. I want to ask you a question. What, you know, it follows us. What have you left in your wake? And so you say, what am I, what, what's he talking about? You know, when a boat goes down a river, what does it leave in, in, in behind it? Leaves a what? Leaves a wake. So, so here's the thing. What have you left in your wake? Have you left goodness and mercy or are you, have you left confusion and turmoil? I always like to look at people's wakes. What's behind them? What did they leave? After they got finished with something, what, what, what effect did they have? And, and you see, if we're really sheep of the Lord's pastures, we live life. When we get done with a situation, we are to leave goodness and mercy in our wake. Can you say amen to that? Absolutely. Not confusion and turmoil, tearing things up, but no, goodness and mercy. So goodness and mercy should follow us to bless us. And then that goodness and mercy should be in our wakes behind us that everywhere we go, when we leave, we've left goodness and mercy. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And remember this, the house of God is not a filling station. It's not some place you just come once in a while when you get low to get filled up. No, you need to come on a regular basis so you stay full, so your cup stays full and running over. Glory to God. You need to dwell in the house of the Lord. Dwell in the house of the Lord. And this is Jehovah Shalek. Jehovah Shalek. This is our inheritance, the goodness and the mercy and the dwelling in the house of the Lord. And if you dwell in the house of the Lord, the Bible says in Psalm 91, he who dwells in the, in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And, and if somebody abides and dwells in the house of the Lord, listen to what Psalm 91 says. Now I know we've studied Psalm 23, but Psalm 91 says, if you dwell in the house of the Lord, surely God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks at dark, in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. It will not come nigh thee. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Glory to God. There shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. He'll give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shalt tread on the lion, the adder, the young lion, the dragon. Shall trample, you'll trample underfoot. Glory to God. He'll call on me and I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. I'll set him on high. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God. Praise God. If you can't get excited about that, you need to get saved. Glory to God. It means the Lord is my inheritance. Did you get anything out of this today? The 23rd Psalm is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's all about the covenant compound names of the Lord, which are all pointing to Jesus Christ. And every last one of them is a the name of Jesus. Now I want to call everybody on social media if you don't know Jesus. Everybody here in this congregation knows Jesus. But if you're out there and you're watching, you don't know him. Call on him. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. If you do that with a repentant heart, mean it. He'll come into your life. You'll become a sheep of his pasture. You'll miss hell. You'll make heaven. And he'll make your life worth living in the meantime. So do that. You'll never regret it. God bless you. Bye-bye.